Is there anybody there? Oh, there's loads of people here. Wonderful. Fabulous. Wonderful and fabulous and smashing. Thank you, person who has liked this. I always forget to say subscribe. It should be like written all over, shouldn't it? Subscribe to my channel. I don't know. I don't know why. I mean, it looks good, I suppose, doesn't it? If you've got more subscribers, you look more, like, proper. Yes. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Okay. Um, I haven't got a ball. I've got an apple. But that's okay. And um, a piece of string and a piece of paper. Yeah, I'm sorted. I've been slightly put off by the fact that my oven's on, but I am baking bread. So I'm sorry that you're not here in person, actually. You'll just have to imagine that my kitchen smells amazing. And about 40 minutes into the lesson, probably when you're doing your GCSE question, uh, can you remind me that I need to take the bread out? Somebody. Hopefully saying that will make me take the bread out. Right. Should we get started? I think we should just do it. It's 11 o'clock. I see no re I mean, faffing does bring people in. That We know the more I faff, the more people arrive. But I, like, I don't want to punish you guys for being on time. Let's, let's just do it. Oh, wait. Um, oh, is this my... No. So I, yeah, I'm just going to do some genuine faffing. Bit of paper. It's fine. I had, I'd like 
written a little, uh, written some little bullet points of what I was going to talk about when, but I'm sure I'll remember. <laughs> Maybe it'll be better if I'm not relying on it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Okay, I am going to flip. Oh, look, see, there's loads of people here. See, my faffing has been rewarded. You guys, I'm never going to learn if the audience numbers double when I faff around. Okay, quick, let's not lose the new people. Let's flip over. You ready? You've got your, um, your ball. I've got a, a foot. You, that meant football. I've actually got an apple, so don't worry too much about the rolly thing. Uh, yes, we can go. Okay, you ready? I'm flipping you. Ah, hello, everybody. Hello. My name is Lara. I am trained to teach physics to secondary school children up to A-level. You are the Science Alliance, and this is IGCSE lesson four. We're doing forces, okay? So it's kind of a standalone lesson. At the end, I'm going to work it in slightly to what we've been doing previously on acceleration and velocity and hopefully tell you something extremely cool that I don't know. Okay, um, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just talk about forces. Have you got a ball? A rolly thing. I've got an apple, quite a pleasingly circular apple. What I'd like you to do, first of all, is to just roll your ball along the surface, okay? Any surface, could use a table. I've got this little bit of turf. So give your ball a little roll and, and see what happens. <laughs> surprise. No, surprise! So what a force is, is a push or a pull, okay? Or, or a twist, but I mean, do a twisty motion. What are you actually doing? You're just kind of pulling and pushing at the same time. So a force is a push or a pull. I, I will, we'll say what it's measured in, although we'll talk about this uh, later on. Force is measured in newtons. That's a big nuh. So, you know, like if you were going to say distance, you might say five metres. If you're talking about a force, you might say that the force was like five five Newtons, um, named after, of course, Isaac Newton, the great Isaac Newton scientist. Um, so a force is a push or a pull. So what you've done is you've applied a force to your apple slash ball. Um, so what do forces do? Well, the temptation is to say that forces make things move. Well, they're not quite true. I mean, the ball has moved, right? So the ball has gone from staying still and then we've applied a force, in this case, a push, and the ball has moved. What's actually happened there, right? What, what has the ball done? What has the force done to the ball in like science terms, in physics words? Come on, if you've seen lessons one, two, and three, or even just lesson three, you know these science words. What's happened to the ball when we've applied this force? What's it actually done? It's gone from being still to moving. Hmm. <laughs> it's accelerated, hasn't it? It's accelerated, right? It's uh, gone from having no speed to a speed, zero velocity to some velocity. So it's accelerated. So our force has accelerated. It has made something happen. Here's my big question. And if you, if you came to my forces lesson for uh, sort of slightly younger children 18 months ago, uh, I looked back on it. It was really hard. So we're copying it a lot for it today. Why does the ball stop? This is the big question. Why does the ball stop? So I started studying physics when I was like, I don't know, 32? No, 28, quite late on. I think before then I'd have just said, it just does. Why does the ball stop? The, the Greeks had this idea that maybe like the push had run out. You, you kind of imagine that's it, right? That you give it a push and then the, the push somehow runs out and that's why it stops. But that's not it. Some of you are probably screaming, friction, Lara, because friction. All right, yes, it's friction. So what happens is another force acts on the ball or the apple. So this friction is a force. I'll write it on the board. Because it's YouTube, so I get to write forwards on YouTube. I have to write backwards on Facebook. Friction is a force that slows stuff down. It acts against motion. So it seems really weird, but you push the ball this way. As soon as your finger comes off the ball, you have stopped applying a force to that ball, okay? The, the ball rolls along and there's no more pushing force on it this way. What's now happening as the ball rolls along is that the grass is like pushing back on the ball. That's what friction is, yeah? Um, so friction can be a very good thing. It can be quite annoying, like if you rub your hands together. 
friction is rubbing, the force of, that occurs when things rub against each other, it generates heat, you will be able to feel. So it's quite annoying in mechanics, like gears rubbing against each other, a lot of heat makes them inefficient. But it's also super useful, right? Because you, you can only walk on the floor because you step onto the floor, you push against the floor, and the floor pushes back on you, and the friction from the floor makes you go forward. There's not very much friction on ice, which is why it's hard to walk on ice. Okay, so what do forces actually do then? They don't just make stuff move. What they do is they change, they, they can change the motion of something. Okay, so have a look again. Um, we can really get a lot of leverage out of this apple, right? We apply a force and we push it and it starts to move, okay? So the force has made it move, it's accelerated it. But now, the, imagine that it's just rolling along, it then stops, right? So its movement changes again, it goes from moving to stopping. So there must be some sort of force acting on it because its mo movement has changed and the force acting on it is the friction of the table pushing back, right? So if we pushed it on ice, there'd be less friction and it would go further. If we pushed it on something that was even more magically unfrictiony than ice, it would go on forever, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, um, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, I gave you a little riddle of what does showing a packet of sweets to my children have to do with forces? And the answer is, it changes their motion, right? If my kids are like lying around like, no, we don't want to go, we don't want to go, and I show them a packet of sweets, they leap up into the car, ready to do whatever I ask them. But if they're running around the house and I'm like, Sweet. Then they go, <gasps> like that. Same thing with forces. They change the motion of things. Um, we're going to develop this a little bit later because what I've said there is not ex extremely true. It's not perfectly true. I'm going to give you a sheet. Shh. Just, just do the sheet, okay? This is a simple brain exercise sheet to just get your brain thinking about what forces actually are and where they come from. So I've just got uh, nine scenarios. And for each scenario, I'd like you please to say, whether the force causing each change of movement is a push or a pull, and say, or guess, because, you know, some of it's biology or whatever, you're not necessarily going to know, what is causing the force, okay? So my example is a ball stopping on a carpet. That's a change of motion, yeah? It's been moving, and then the ball has stopped. That was a push. And where the push came from was friction from the carpet. So moving your arm from straight to bent, you can do it and see what you think. Is that a push or a pull? And what has actually caused the force? An apple falling from a tree, a bike breaking, uh, you stopping because you walked into a lamppost, a puffer fish going from unpuffed to puffed. Can't say unpuffed enough, love it. Six, a frog's fart rising through a pond. Seven, a hot air balloon taking off. Eight, a poo coming out of a kitchen. And nine, coke coming out of a can because your friend shook it. And didn't tell you there are there are more there's more poos and fart references in this lesson than usual because like I say I um I did borrow quite a bit of this sheet from a previous lesson that I did where there were eight year olds there you might be eight and I mean I'm nearly forty and I'm still really enjoying the phrase a poo coming out of a kitten so no apologies from me if you're bored you can always like and subscribe I'm gonna get some more coffee. How are you getting on? Some of them were very difficult. Some of them I didn't know. I've got a whole mini lesson on a puffer fish in the middle of this worksheet because uh, I didn't know anything about puffer fish. They're pretty cool. I'm going to give you, mm, what, 15 seconds because this is just, no, maybe 20. Have I gone too fast? It's just brain exercise though. I want to move on. 20 seconds. I'm going to count in my head. Off you go. Like that, that's about 10. Now I'm trying to do it along with you to get a feel for how long it takes. It's quite, it's quite hard actually, isn't it?
Some of them, like the hot air balloon one, I really didn't know. Oh, oh come on! Tris has just sent me a, a message via Instagram. Oh, that's clever. Oh, no. And it came up in my alerts and now it's gone. But he said something about science friction. <laughs> science friction. I don't even know the, need to know the rest of the sentence. That is a strong pun, Tris. Thank you. <laughs> This whole lesson should be called Science Friction. Man, can you, like, design my YouTube videos to make them a bit more clickbaity? Okay, well, shush, Trish, stop distracting me. There's no comments on YouTube videos. Let's go. Moving your arm from straight to bent um, is to do with your bicep muscle here, this bulgy muscle here. You can put your hand on it, and when you bend your arm, you might feel it's getting shorter. So that's a pull. Your bicep muscle contracts. It gets shorter. I'm miming that out for you. And... Um, that's what moves your bones closer together. An apple falling from a tree. Well, you will have no doubt I've said gravity, right? That the gravity is pulling an apple towards the ground. That is perfectly correct. Um, for today's lesson on forces, we are going to, instead of saying, because we're going to label some force diagrams in a minute, instead of saying gravity, we're going to say weight. Um, weight is like how much... We, we use the word weight wrong a lot in everyday life. Weight is like how much gravity is acting on you, okay? Um, so the app, we're going to say the apple's weight pulls it to the ground. But if you said gravity, you're right. We'll do a whole other lesson on weight. Uh, a bicycle braking. Well done if you got that. That's friction, isn't it? Because the brake pads push on the wheel and the friction between the brake pad and the wheel makes the wheel stop turning. Very good. That was a push. You walking into a lamppost. That is a push. Um, the lamppost is pushing back on you. More of that later. A puffer fish going from puffed to unpuffed. Wait, no, and the other way around. Um, it's a push, but I just found this out. They, well, they suck water into their mouths and then they push the water into their stomachs. Short interval while I show you a picture of a puffer fish. Look, this isn't unpuffed puffer fish. And then what happens? <laughs> Turns out they've got spikes anyway, but when they puff out, then just like a, a football inflating, all the spikes kind of stand upright. So clever, isn't it? So uh, uh, this fish is very easily eaten. This fish, nothing's got a chance of eating this fish. It's covered in spikes. It's like trying to eat a football. Also, it turns out, incredibly poisonous. Like a thousand times more poisonous than cyanide. So there you go. Let's get back to the physics. Thanks, puffer fish. Uh, a frog's fart rising through a pond. Do you know what? I don't know. It's pretty complicated, this, actually. I've said push of air on water and of water on air. I don't know. Um, I, sh I should know. I and mean, again, we're going to do a whole other lesson on... Um, like density and things rising through water, but you've got water, right? Particles close together. You've got air particles. Let's just draw a bubble of air, okay? But a bubble of air is just air particles that are more spread out, so they're rising up. So I guess the air particles are like pushing the water particles out of the way, but also there's water down here, like that kind of trying to get into this space that the air bubbles in. So there's water pushing from from below as well. So I, as, as a physics teacher, I feel like I should know this. Consultation is required. I need to do some research. But anyway, it's definitely a push in it. It's not a pull. Uh, hot air balloon taken off. I just copied and pasted, so it doesn't make any sense because I've put about water. But it's a push, okay? The hot air in the balloon is rising upwards and pushing air below it, above it out of the way. And air below is getting into the space. Poo coming out of kitten. That is also a push. It's a push of the guts. It's the same way you swallow. It's a muscle contraction. Hello, to me again. Um, yeah, if you hold your hands about a couple of inches away from you and make them both do that dance move, like the, is it a caterpillar onto each other? That's called peristalsis. It's a push and relax, and a push and relax, and a push and relax. It's how a kitten gets its poo out. It's also what happens in your esophagus food moving through your esophagus. Yeah, I know, right? It's all about the biology today. Coat coming out of a can. I just copied and pasted this water thing again. I don't know. It's a push, though. It's gas rising, isn't it? <laughs> Liquid. Okay, moving on. Right. Um, so I think we'd better move on to... Oh, yeah. I'll tell you a little bit more about friction. We will do, I don't want to do an activity because we'll do this in another lesson, but friction, this idea of stuff rubbing against each other and that is a force. It, it happens in solid stuff we've, as we've seen, like on the ground when you walk, but it also happens in gases and liquids as well. I mean, you know this, don't you? Like moving through a swimming pool is harder than moving through air because there's more, it, it is friction. Um, in water, you tend to call it like drag more than friction, but these are the same things. I just, I'm going to say these words later so I just want to make sure that you don't get scared you know what I mean um, and when it's air you might have heard of air resistance so aeroplanes do not look like this 
because lots of air particles would bash into their noses and make it hard for them to travel through. There'd be a lot of air resistance, right? Just air particles just bashing in, that's all air resistance is. So aeroplanes look like this, so that the air can flow around them. So, but that's still a kind of friction, right? It's still particles resisting, um, particles resisting, you know. It's a, it's a type of friction because it's, it's opposing the movement of the thing. Um, and yet, yeah, exams will probably try and use all three words to confuse you. No, to test you um, in a good way. Right, let's do some force diagrams. Yes, um, because you, this is the most important thing, really. Force diagrams is just how we draw forces. So you draw forces as arrows, and the, the bigger the arrow, the, the greater the force. So nearly all force diagrams, it's just a dot. Whatever you're talking about, when you're looking at the forces acting on it, but just imagine that it's a dot. So, um, the, where do I start with this? So, we've talked about how if the forces on something are balanced, hmm, should I do this now? Uh, uh, yeah, no, I'll do force diagrams first. Uh, no, I won't actually, no. Get your string. Did you bring some string? I think we should do this first. Get some string. We've talked about how applying forces changes the movement of things, yeah? So if your string's on the table and you pull it, it's gonna move, right? Pulling is a force, you apply the pulling force, it moves, it accelerates, we've got a change in movement. Um, can you please, <coughs> can you please pick up the string and apply forces in such a way that the string doesn't move? <coughs> Can you apply forces to your string in such a way that it does not move? Apply forces, but I don't want any movement from the string. What? But forces cause change in movement. Oh, what are you talking about? I got super confused by your adorable sneeze. Apply forces to the string in such a way that it doesn't move. Come on, five, four, three, two. Yeah, are you doing it? Are you doing this? Look, if you hold a string on either side and you pull as hard as you can, unless it's a delicate string, in which case don't, um, it doesn't move, does it? So what's going on here? There's loads of force being applied, but it's not moving. So what I told you was a slight lie. Forces can cause a movement in things, um, but only unbalanced forces. If forces are balanced, like if you're pulling on both sides of the string with the same amount of force, then it doesn't change the movement of the thing, okay? So if you pull slightly more with the left hand, then it goes to the left, yeah? Physics. Um, but if the forces are balanced, it doesn't move. Stand up. Go on. Stand up. Why are you not falling through the floor? So now we can go to our force diagram, right? Let's pretend that this is us. Yeah, you're a ball now. I'm sorry. Physics says so. Um, Let's do an arrow pointing down, okay? It's weird with force diagrams. You would think that if you wanted to show um, a gravity acting on you, that you would draw an arrow like that to show that like gravity was pulling you down, but you don't. You have to pretend that you kind of are the ball. So what is the ball feeling? The ball is feeling a pull of gravity down this way. Let's call it our weight, because that's what it is. How much gravity is pulling us down. But this, uh, this force diagram isn't balanced, right? There's only one arrow going downwards. So this is an unbalanced, there's an unbalanced forces are acting on this little ball. Um, so if this is you, then there's only an arrow going this way and it's your weight. So according to this force diagram, you should be traveling through the floor right now. Why aren't you falling through the floor? Why are you not traveling through the floor? Ridiculous question. Some of you will know because you'll have seen my previous lesson. But really think about it. Why aren't you moving through the floor? Why isn't your weight taking you through the floor? It's because, so weird, it's because the floor is pushing back on you. The floor is pushing back with an equal and opposite force. I'll call it, we'll call it the reaction force. But you could just call it uh, pushing back. This is what that lamppost was doing when you bashed into it on the first sheet that we did. Okay, 
you hit a lamppost, the lamppost like pushes back on you. It's so weird, but this is the only way that it works. So now this is a balanced force diagram. See, we've got an arrow pointing down, we've got the same size arrow pointing upwards. So the forces on this thing are balanced, so we're not moving. Now the really super awesome and weird thing is that when the forces on something are balanced, if it's staying still like we are now, then it just carries on staying still. Okay? If one of these forces became unbalanced, like if someone gave us some very, very heavy weights to hold, then, we, then this arrow would get bigger, right? And then we might travel through the floor. Because, well, we would travel through the floor, in fact, if this force became greater than this force. That's an unbalanced force diagram, so we would be moving in that direction. Um, but yeah, you remember like the, the ball that was rolling on something that hardly had any friction? So this is our, say that we've got a ball, uh, well, first of all let's talk about the ball that was just rolling along the table, okay? Um, it's got, it's weight acting down, always, nearly always, I don't know, there's probably some GCSE question where it doesn't, just to fox you, but yeah, a ball on a table, totally still, its weight is pulling it down, uh, the reaction force of the table is pushing back up on it, so its forces are balanced, it's not moving, okay? When I push the ball with my finger, then I apply a force in this direction, okay? So this would be the force diagram for when I'm pushing the ball, like when my finger's on the ball, okay? Um, so you can see the forces on it are unbalanced, so its movement is changing, yeah? It's moving in that direction, isn't it? What's the force diagram? This is so weird and hard. What's the force diagram for after I take my finger away? What's the force diagram for after I take my finger away? Which direction is friction acting in? Yeah. The force diagram for after I take my finger away is this. Because there's still a force acting on it, yeah? It's rolling along a table. So as soon as it's moving along a surface, then friction is pushing on it. But friction is pushing in this direction. So it's, it's, you've got to be careful because you might look at that force diagram and think, oh, okay, the forces are balanced, so it's a thing moving in that direction. But actually it's not. It's moving in this direction, but it's slowing down because the only force acting on it now, the unbalanced force, is pushing in this direction. Is that okay? It's a bit weird, but I don't know. I like this stuff. Um, yeah, and then what I wanted to get to is the, the super weird thing that if this ball was in space, Imagine it's in deep space, it's not near any kind of planets or stars, okay? So there's no forces acting on it up or down, it doesn't have any weight because there's no gravity to act on it and pull it down anywhere. If you push it, <clears throat> then first of all, its force diagram looks like this because you apply the force in this direction, it's unbalanced, it starts to move. When you take your finger away, there's no forces acting on it anymore, yeah? There's no friction because we're in space, conveniently. Uh, there's no weight, no forces acting on it. So this is a balance force diagram, but what happens to the ball? Does it stop? No, it just never stops because there's nothing to slow it down. There's no friction. So finally, I apologize, it took me ages. We've got to Newton's first law. Isaac Newton was the one who looked at all this stuff and said, aha, uh -huh. when something has balanced forces, if it's staying still, then it'll just stay still. Like if balanced forces act on a still thing, then the still thing will just stay still. If something's moving and the forces on it are balanced, it'll just keep moving forever. Is that okay? Because ball in space, if you push a ball in space, it would just keep going. Come on, we've, I don't want to start a big debate like I did on Facebook the other day, but if you've seen the, the movie Lightyear, then you know that when something starts moving in space, it just doesn't stop. And that's because the forces on it are balanced and it's moving. So, right. I'll give you this little sheet to check if you've understood Newton's uh, first law. Here we go. It's the hardest sheet to say that I've ever made in my life. You just need to put the words in the right places and some of the words you don't need to use. So the words are stay still, moving, forces, balanced, forces, stop, same, keep and speed. Stay still, moving, forces, balanced, forces, stop, same, keep and speed. And the sentence is... If these something acting on a still object are balanced, it will something. If the something acting on a moving object are something, it will something something add the something something. <laughs> if the something acting on a still object are balanced, it will something. If the something acting on a moving object are something, it will something something add the something something. 
Go on, have a go. While I can blow my notes again. You have got the time it takes me to go and get to shoot something. <coughs> Should we go through it? If the forces acting on a still object are balanced, the forces acting on a still object are balanced, it will stay still. If the forces acting on a moving object are balanced, it will keep moving at the same speed. Well done if you got that, and extremely well done if you didn't get it, but now you understand it. And even more well done if you really don't get it, but you're thinking, oh, well, I'll watch the end of this lesson and then I'll go and do a bit of research myself. OK, I think you need my second sheet. Are you ready for the second sheet? <coughs> OK. Um, yeah, I think we've covered everything you need for the second sheet. I've used the word upthrust, but in brackets I've just put air moving up. So, like, an aeroplane moving through the sky doesn't sink because air is pushing up on it, and the word for that is upthrust, so don't be freaked out by that. Now you can do my sheet. <laughs> Here we are. So I have some more scenarios for you. Um, can you see them all? Let's get it in the right place. Um, so for all these different scenarios, these six scenarios, what I'd like you to do is to say if the forces acting on the object are balanced or unbalanced... Are the forces acting on the objects balanced or unbalanced? You might only get that done. That's totally fine. Depends how easy you're finding this. Um, and when you've said if they're all balanced or unbalanced, can you finish labelling the forces using the words in pink that I've scattered around the sheet? So number one, a cat sitting on a mat. Are the forces on a cat sitting still on a mat? Are they balanced or are they unbalanced? Um, and I've labelled for you the force of the ground pushing up on the cat. What's the force pushing down or pulling down? Number two, pushing a trolley at three miles per hour. Pushing a trolley at a steady three miles per hour. You can tell I've used exciting examples from my own life here, can't you? <laughs> so I've labelled friction, which is pushing back. Um, what's the force going forwards? And is that balanced or not balanced? Number three, if you're sitting still on a swing, mm, the tricks, isn't it? You're on a swing, but you're still. What are the forces there? Um, and the words are just pull, push, air resistance, up thrust and weight. Four, if you're at the top of a swing, but you're about to fall, what are the forces acting on you? And are they balanced or unbalanced? If you're right at the top of a swing, not like standing on a swing, you know what I mean? You've swung up and then you're about to swing down again. Um, be really careful here. A balloon lifting off. You draw the arrows. I haven't given you a lot of info. I didn't tell you that a lot, really. But have a go. If a balloon is just lifting off, okay, so it's just leaving the ground then what do the force arrows look like? And is it pushes or pulls or air resistance or up first or weight? And this plane, which was foxing people on Facebook yesterday, a plane is speeding up in the forwards direction. So I've put an arrow facing forwards and I've written that that's the thrust of the engine making it go forwards. What are the other forces acting on it? What are the forces pulling it down and keeping it up? And what are the many forces pushing back on it the other way? And are the forces on it balanced or unbalanced if it's a speeding up plane? I'll do the first one, shall I? 
<clears throat> and then you can see if you're on the right track or not. So the first one, if it's a cat completely sitting still, then its movement isn't changing. And if its movement isn't changing, the forces on it must be balanced. So well done if you said that the forces on the cat are balanced. And the force pushing down, um, it's always so nice if you're doing an IGCSE exam and you see that you have to label a force in the downwards direction because it's nearly always weight. So the cat's weight is pulling it down to the ground and the, the ground is pushing back on the cat. So the force is on it balanced. Well done if you got that. I'll give you um, another minute for the rest because the, the plain one was really causing some grievance for people yesterday. Although I've probably taught it better today because it's my third time. And don't forget, I've got, um, I've always got a post on my Facebook page. I always put one up just before I do these lessons saying that you can comment and question me on Facebook if you like can't have comments on YouTube because uh, they don't let you if it's aimed at children, which this clearly is. All right, another mm, 10 seconds. Is that all right? Eight seconds now. Now it's about five. Four. Three. Right, this trolley then, it's moving at three miles per hour. Um, did I give you enough there? It is saying something's moving at three miles an hour, like saying it's moving at a constant speed. I guess the next second it could be moving at four miles per hour. But anyway, if it's moving at a steady three miles per hour, then it's uh, balanced. The forces on it are balanced because it's moving at a constant speed, okay? It's uh, mo movement isn't changing. And oh, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? You're just pushing it. You're pushing the trolley. So you must be the push of your, your push must be perfectly balancing the push of friction. Um, it's funny, isn't it? You'd think that if you were pushing with exactly the same force as friction was pushing back, that you wouldn't go anywhere. But if you're already moving, then that just means you're going at a constant speed. When you started pushing, you would have had to have pushed more to get it going. Right, sitting on a swing. Um, well, weight is obviously pulling you down. You're, it's balanced because you're not moving. Your weight's acting down, and what's acting up is a pull. Um, it's the pull of the string, isn't it? So you're, you're pulling down on the string, and the string is sort of pulling back on you, so it's a reaction force. Well done if you got that. Um, number four, if you're at the top of the swing about to fall, your movement is, well, your movement is changing. I mean, hmm, if you're about to fall, I suppose, there will be like a split second when the forces on you are balanced. So I guess I'll give you that, but the, I've said the forces on you are unbalanced. There's only weight acting downwards and nothing acting on you elsewhere. So you are about to go down. A balloon lifting off. Um, yeah, this one's quite hard, actually. I just, I admit, I had to change this at the last minute before I came online because I realised that I'd made both arrows the same size. And that's not right, is it? Um, if the balloon is lifting into the air, if it's gone from staying still to moving upwards then there must be unbalanced forces acting on it because its movement is changing. So it's unbalanced forces. Its weight is pulling it down and it's a bigger force, like up thrust, pushing it upwards. I got a brilliant question about this uh, yesterday, so I'm going to pretend that you've asked it again. <laughs> Someone said, because um, also I feel bad like just narrating, some people need to see my mouth move. So um, someone said... Like, what happens when it's in the sky and the balloon, like, if it got a hole in it and it collapsed, like, what would the force diagram look like? So I thought, that's a brilliant question. So if the balloon's on the ground, then its weight is acting down, right? And the force of the ground is pushing up. So in order for the balloon to get off the ground, what needs to happen is that this force needs to increase, yeah? That's why you fill the balloon with hot air, because that up thrust beats its weight, if you like. So when it's, if it's going to go from staying still to moving upwards, you've got to create an unbalanced force, which is this one here, the other. Uh, when it's in the air, I just love hot air, I'm drawing hot air balloons. I think it's because I'm so good at it. Um, when it's in the air, the forces on it could be balanced, right? Is that okay? Just like you getting the trolley going, once you're pushing the supermarket trolley, the forces on it can be balanced. So if the balloon's weight perfectly matches the up thrust when it's in the air, 
<clears throat> it's obviously, it doesn't go down, does it? It doesn't go up, it just stays still, quite pleasant. Maybe there would be some wind acting on it, like pushing it in that direction, so, but it'd just be floating. Um, what happens if there was a big hole in it, some sort of swan disaster? Well, what force would change? The temptation is to say, oh, it's going downwards, so like, this force must change. But no, because this is the balloon's weight, yeah? So it hasn't got any heavier or any lighter, has it? I mean, I don't think the air will have made that much difference. All that's happened is that this arrow has got a lot smaller. I mean, probably this arrow has like almost completely disappeared. You'd get a little bit of air resistance from air bashing against the basket as it plummeted to the ground. But that would be the force diagram. You would just draw a dot if you were doing it in an exam. But that would be the force diagram for a balloon that had just been in a terrible accident was falling. So, okay, I just thought it was a good question. Right, uh, sorry. This one about the aeroplane, uh, well, it's speeding up in the forwards direction, but it's not going up and it's not going down. So the forces on it in those directions must be balanced. So I've drawn just small arrows because it's going forward. So you want the forwards arrow to be the biggest one because that's the thrust that's winning, if you see what I mean. Um, so three arrows on it. The up thrust, just the push of the air underneath the wing, must be balancing the weight because it's not going up and it's not going down. And of course it's moving and it's not moving through empty space, so you're always going to have a little bit of air resistance. Or well, you could say friction from the air pushing against it, but in this case uh, the friction is, is less than the thrust of the engine. So it's speeding up, it's going forwards, um, totally smoothly, turning the oven off because I realised I forgot. Is that okay? This is really bothering people yesterday. So four forces acting on a plane. Its movement is changing. So there must be unbalanced forces acting on it. And it's speeding up. So it must have some sort of larger force in the forwards direction. Yeah, oh, that's all right, isn't it? Right. Um, let's quickly link all this back to velocity and speed and stuff before we finish and do a quick, uh, very quick little exam question. Right, get your string and get a piece of paper and all I want you to do is to sort of scrunch up the paper, use scrap paper if you can, um, scrunch up a bit of paper and tie it to the end of the string so that you've got something that you can swirl around your head, okay? You, you know what I mean, don't you? Like this. Tie a bit of string to a bit of paper so that you can do this. I made myself really quite motion sick doing it too much yesterday, so I'm going to stop. Um, we're going to talk about speeds and vectors again, okay? So in the last couple of lessons, if you didn't see them, we were looking at something called scalars. Oh, it's not Facebook. Yeah, I can write forwards. We were talking about scalars. Scalars are sort of amounts that you can describe with just a unit and a number. So we were looking at how speed is a scalar. Because if someone says, how fast did you go? And you say, uh, five metres per second, then that would be fine and correct and a lovely way of describing your speed. But a vector is something that has to be described using a direction as well. I hope you're tying string to paper. Yeah. Um, so we looked at how velocity is a little bit like speed because it's, you could still say that your velocity was five meters per second, but you also have to say a direction because ve ve velocity is a vector. So to describe velocity, you have to say like to the left or whatever. So that's the difference between speed and velocity. And we looked at how acceleration um, is also a vector, actually. And ac acceleration is uh, how something's velocity changes. I've had a right mind block on how to sp spell acceleration. It's two C's, isn't it, and one L. Yeah, I'm going with that. So velocity is a vector, acceleration is a vector. Okay, have you got your spinny thing? Right, spin your thing. Okay, so first question. Um, is the force acting here a push or a pull? Is the force that's going on a push or a pull? And are the forces balanced? Is it a push or a pull? And are the forces balanced? Well, hopefully you're saying pull. You can feel, can't you, that you're pulling on the string. Um, are the forces balanced? Well, the... The forces on the string are balanced, aren't they? Like the string's not flying off into the room, hopefully, and it's not coming back to you. So I guess the force diagram for the string would be 
uh, it's a bit, a bit weird thinking of a string as a dot, but if you imagine you're here, you're pulling on the string and the string is pulling back. You can kind of feel like the tension in the string. So the, the forces are balanced on the string. Okay, so it's a, it's a pulling force. Oh, Wormy! Come on, Wormy. Oh, you're so robust, I love it. Um, is the speed constant? Is it going at a constant speed? Just five seconds, just tell me. Is it travelling at a constant speed, do you think? Yes, I'm going to say that it is travelling at a constant speed. Right, making myself feel quite queasy, but you can see that the paper is flashing past the screen at pretty much the same amount of time, like the same amount of spins every second or whatever. Yeah, it's moving at a constant speed. Is it moving at a constant velocity? Is it moving at a constant velocity? I love this. This has got to be like one of my favourite physics facts ever. Is it moving at a constant velocity? I'm going to stop. You know what it looks like. I'm just going to make myself speed. Is it moving at a constant velocity? There was a real debate on Facebook about this the other day. Um, let's have a look. Someone said, which was a brilliant answer I'd never heard before, that it was going at a constant velocity because its direction was always clockwise or anti-clockwise or whatever. And velocity is like speed with direction. And it was always going anti-clockwise. And I loved that. Um, but it's not, actually, it's not actually true. It's not what we say. So if you imagine this is your string and the paper is spinning in a circle, if you freeze the movement, what you'd find at this point here is which direction is the paper moving? In this split second, it's moving, we've done tangents, haven't we, when we're looking at graphs. It's moving in this direction, okay? And if you, a split second later, froze the action again, then it would be here, and it would be travelling in this direction. And the same here, it would be travelling in this direction. So something moving in a circle is constantly changing direction. So its velocity is changing. It's got a constant speed it's changing velocity. So what else can we say about it? If we know that its velocity is changing, if the velocity of something is changing, what beautiful physics word that we've been... It's probably my child's school because no one else ever rings me. It's accelerating! Isn't that brilliant? Oh, it just pleases me so greatly. Excel... Accelerate. It's accelerating, okay? Woohoo! It's true. Something moving in a circle is accelerating because its velocity is changing, so it's constantly moving direction. Changing direction, isn't that great? A thing moving in a circle is accelerating. You get to pass on that science fact in a very smug way to anyone will listen from now on, which, in my experience, is not that many people. Okay, should we do the GCSE question? Quick reminder that if you are enjoying these lessons and you're not supporting me, then you totally can. If you're using these lessons, you can go to the About section of my Facebook page, uh, of my YouTube channel, which you're on right now, and click the link to Coffee and support me with five or six pounds a month. And for that, I can teach all my lessons for free. All the IGCSE lessons and the All Ages Home Ed, if you come to those, and the shows with little Lego stories, if you come to those, and I'll send you Theatre Science Magazine. This one, they're about every two months or so, uh, is on seeds. I'll send you a free sprinkle of seeds, mystery seeds that you can plant. Um, it's just got loads of activities in it. I'm very proud of Theatre Science Magazine. It's got a personality quiz, which seed are you? Loads of information about seeds. Far more information than you get in any other children's science magazine, uh, in my opinion. They're just not, they're not weighty and fact-ridden enough for me, so I made my own. Uh, but it's also got comics. Right, GCSE question, here we go. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Children, don't you be pressing any links to buttons. Your job is just to enjoy the lessons, okay? Right, GCSE questions. There's, they're only kind of one mark each. A car travels along a straight road. The forces on it are balanced. Describe the movement of the car. A car travels along a straight road, so you've got a car here with the same size arrow pointing forwards as pointing backwards. The forces on it are balanced. Describe the movement of the car, one mark. And a cat falls to the ground. <laughs> forces A and B act on the cat. So you've got a cat in the air. Force A is an arrow pointing upwards. Force B is an arrow pointing downwards. What is causing force A? So what force is, is the force pushing upwards? And uh, your choices are friction or weight, or gravity. The cat falls to the ground, so you've got force B pulling it down, force A pushing it up. What is causing force A? Friction, weight, or gravity? 
gonna try and get my bread out of the tin and then we'll go for the other. Right, let's go through the answer then. Uh, the forces on the car are balanced, but it's moving, so it must be going at a constant speed. Well done if you got that. One mark. Well done. Um, if they hadn't told us it was moving, then that wouldn't necessarily be the right answer, would it? If, if we just saw the force diagram, but they didn't say it was travelling, it could be staying still, couldn't it? It could be that two people were arguing over the car and pulling it from either side or something, and it was actually staying still. But if it's moving and the force is on the balance, then it's going at constant speed. And the cats, I love this question. They're really trying to fool you, yeah? Because you're thinking, oh, okay, oh, they want me to say gravity, but I know that the correct word is weight, so I'll write weight. But no, those are both forces that would be pulling the cat down, and this is pushing the cat up. So well done if you didn't really know that you knew it couldn't be weight or gravity because they act downwards. So it must be friction and it is friction. They've just called it friction instead of what you might be more used to at this level, which is air resistance or drag, uh, because they're testing you, which, you know, is good. So well done if you passed the sneaky test. Okay, everybody, uh, I'm, I'm going to go and check that that wasn't my child's school calling me. Um, and I will see you next week it's my 40th birthday next week so i might uh, actually do a i'm just gonna look on facebook and see if anyone's left me any comments so i might do pre-recorded lessons next week i haven't decided i have got a couple of, of quite good ideas for lessons that could be pre-recorded um yeah and i just want to like go and see my mates <laughs> decided that for my birthday i'm going to give myself the gift of friendship because uh, you'll be too young to know, but when you get to your 40s, you've got friends who you hung out with through your whole of your 20s. And then you see them three times in your 30s for when various people get married or have babies. And then you just don't see them anymore. Unless you tell them it's your 40th birthday and they have to meet up with you. <laughs> so I think, I think that's what I'm doing, but I don't honestly know. I haven't decided on like days and things. <gasps> Comments! Right, let's have a look. But there'll definitely be a lesson. Uh, it just might not be live. I might be commenting on it with you. That would be quite funny. Oh, come on, look! Is that no? Resistance and friction are pulling the apple back. Nice, nice. Uh, because the apple's like resisting, you mean like the stalk is kind of pulling back. That's cool. If the force is, oh, it's all no, amazing. Right, should I read these in order, no? Oh, bye from no, bye no. The floor is forcing you the other way. Excellent. If the force is on it, brilliant. Oh yeah, lovely getting answers to these questions. Oh, and there's Tris. If you let go at any point, it goes in a particular direction, so you can see that it's changing direction. Yes, excellent. I should have made you do that. That's right. Tris pointing out that if at this split second you let go, then it does travel in that direction. Yes, but if at another time you let go, travel, what a fantastic way to practically prove what I've just told you. That's awesome. And <laughs> Abby, it's impossible to have no gravity or friction in space. It could be negligible, though, couldn't it? It could be negligible for the purposes of my, for my, of my activity. Um, <laughs> Tris has found where to come in. Children are attracted to the sweets. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, children are attracted to the sweets. That is a good one. Oh, forces, yeah, for, yeah, we'll do more about like forces being attractive later on when we do like electrostatic and magnetism and stuff. Yeah, nice, uh, nice try. I, didn't, I mean, you weren't gonna get it. <laughs> All right, excellent. Thank you, everyone, who has said hello. Thank you for liking and subscribing. I will see you uh, in some form next week.